The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Revelation, at the very end of the Bible. But before Revelation, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family. Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph, became second in charge of the land of Egypt and brought his whole family, the Israelites. But as the Israelites grew in number, Pharaoh got scared and enslaved them all for centuries. God heard the cries of the people and sent a man named Moses to lead them out of Egypt to freedom. In the land God had promised, the people were ruled by judges and then kings. Some, like David, followed God with their whole hearts. But many kings turned away from God. At last, the Israelites were conquered by foreign nations. But even in captivity, some, like Daniel, remembered and served God. And prophets like Isaiah shared God's promise to send a rescuer. Then at the perfect time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. But the new believers faced lots of distractions and difficulties, causing some of them to begin turning away from their faith. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Brian, and we've got an incredible letter to explore today. Mm -hmm. Jesus's close friend and follower, John, had given his entire life to telling people about Jesus, and he had suffered for it. In fact, at the end of his life, John was exiled to the island of Patmos to live out his final days. But even there, John didn't give up hope. He continued to talk with God. And one day, the Holy Spirit gave John a vision. A loud voice like a trumpet called out, and Jesus himself appeared. Write on the scroll what you see. Send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. John fell down at the feet of Jesus. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, but now look, I am alive forever and ever. Jesus gave John special messages about things that were going to happen. Some would happen soon, while others would happen closer to the end of time. I, John, am a believer like you. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. Some of the things that Jesus showed to John were terrible. Others were glorious. Most of them were difficult to understand. But there was one part of the vision that John was most excited to share. The ending, that's the very best part. I can imagine John weeping with joy as he wrote the last things that Jesus showed to him. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, look, God now makes his home with the people. He will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. In the time John writes about, God will live alongside people. We'll be able to see and experience God with our very own eyes. And it just gets better. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. He who was sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Wow, imagine that. All we have ever known is a world full of brokenness. Even on our very best days, we still struggle. I mean, we all know people who are sick or hurting. We know there are people across the world who are hungry or homeless or stuck in the middle of wars. But here Jesus promises that in the end, God will make everything brand new. For those who trust Jesus, there will be no more death, no more pain or even tears. John continued to write down what he saw. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. The Lord God will give them light. 
they will rule forever and ever. Now, it's really hard for our brains to really think about forever. It's maybe even a little scary, right? But life with God won't be boring. Mm -mm. We'll get to continue working with God to take care of God's incredible creation. Just as each of us is uniquely made, God will have the perfect place for each of us to use our talents and gifts. There's so much we don't know, but we do know this. In the end, God will make right every single thing that's wrong. And our place in the story will be amazing. The end. That is pretty much the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, I mean, we often think of heaven as some floaty place in the clouds. With chubby baby angels. But that's not even close. <laughs> no way. Life forever with God will be more glorious and grand than we can possibly imagine. It's like Christmas and birthdays all rolled into one and a gazillion times better. So what's our part in the story? Every day we face pain and frustration. We see so much hurt and brokenness in the world around us, it's easy to feel just helpless and hopeless. But we know this incredible truth. In the end, God will make everything right. And that should give us true hope. Out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. Sometimes God will make things right now, or give you the strength to help make things right. But often we have to wait and live in hope, knowing that in the end, God will make right every single thing that's wrong in the world. And in the meantime, we can share that amazing truth with others so that they can have hope too. I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing, God will make everything right in the end. 